This is like friends hanging out, having a movie club. Watching a movie there with, with, with an audience is better than any theater I've ever been to in my life. It's a little gem enclave in LA that, that there really isn't anything like it. That always goes on the cork board right there. When I walked into the new bed and looked at, at the calendar, same feeling I had, just, oh, warmth that comes over you. I mean, what, what's wonderful about the new Beverly is the camaraderie that formed. I picked my first apartment based on proximity to the new Beverly. There are so few theaters like the new Beverly that they're an endangered species. I think revival houses are, are our best hope to keep the traditional language of cinema alive. Uh, you don't get into repertory to become rich. You do it because you love what you do, and you love the films, and you love the people who come to see the films. If you look at the history of cinema, it's always been about massive transitions in what gets shaken out. It was silent to sound. It was black and white to color. It was the studio system to independence. And now it's celluloid to digital. I mean, everybody knew that this digital thing was coming, but I don't think anybody quite realized how fast it was going to happen. It's the push-pull of the, the old world and you know, the, the new Jack <laughs> way of doing things, you know what I mean? The connection to the new Beverly and the connection to film are two interlocked. The print itself has a history to it. Films should be seen in the manner in which they were intended to be seen by the filmmaker. The fact that people don't count film as an important thing to save is bewildering. Just because it's dying doesn't mean it's dead. Doesn't mean you have to let it fall. You don't have to sit there and be like, what a shame. Look at it die. Why won't anyone help it? You can help it. It doesn't take a lot of people to keep a revival theater going. It just takes the faithful. My relationship with the new Beb, mostly sexual.